you're, my answer to you is going to shock you. I said, I think you came in with a preconceived idea of what I was going to say. And I said, because of how you, uh, you know, uh, orchestrated the question uh, to me here this morning, and uh, uh, it was in such a way of trying to, uh, you know, find out what I believed about censorship. And I said, honestly, I said, uh, I believe in individual uh, freedom, and uh, therefore, I do not believe in censorship. I said, here's why. I said, uh, if somebody begins to say, oh, we got to censor everything, I said, who's the one that makes that decision? I said, if that person now all of a sudden says, guess what? We don't like the Bible anymore. I said, now all of a sudden, the Bible will be censored. And he sat there and he said, yeah, it's not the answer I expected. I said, no, we as individuals need to be willing to say, hey, there are some boundaries that I'm going to set up that I'm not going to cross, some fences that I'm going to make sure are in place in my heart and my life. And uh, I said, that's why I have the fences that I do in my life uh, for me personally, for our church, uh, for all the different things. You know what? Why? Because we do have to have some boundaries, and we have that from the Word of God. Amen? Uh, and, uh, but I told the gentleman, I said, uh, I am uh, uh, for individuals uh, censoring you know, what they read, what they take in, being willing to say, no, I'm not going to read that. I'm not going to look at that. I'm not going to uh, take that in to my eye gate or my ear gate, and uh, being willing to uh, make that uh, decision. Some people believe that censorship, though, is wrong and uh, shout freedom of of expression is being infringed upon uh, when censorship is present. Of course, you as a parent uh, should be censoring uh, that which may be harmful to the spiritual well-being of your children. Uh, You as individuals need to be willing to say, hey, there's some things that I'm not going to allow my children to participate in. I'm not going to allow my children to have. You know, uh, uh, we uh, we didn't allow uh, and still don't allow our children uh, to have uh, uh, Snapchat, for instance. Uh, there's some things that uh, uh, Snapchat just, I don't have it personally. Uh, you know, I don't, uh, I don't use it. You know, well, you know, what's uh, good for the goose is good for the gander, so to speak. Uh, I, I, what, I, uh, what I told my children, hey, I don't want you having this. Uh, our children, uh, our underage children, Timothy, he's, a, he's an adult, so that's between him and the Lord. But uh, uh, our underage children, uh, they don't have social media. The, the, our daughter has Messenger, and our kids have Kids Messenger, which enables them to call us because uh, uh, we don't have a house phone. Uh, uh, they have to be able to get a hold of us, and uh, this enables them to, to get a hold of us. Now, it does uh, allow us to be able to say who, uh, who they can be in contact with. If there's somebody we don't want them to be in contact with, uh, they're not going to get in contact with them. They're not even going to find them. They, you can try to search for our kids. You're not going to find any one of our kids, uh, even you that are here today. I think there's, uh, uh, besides my wife and I, I think there's only uh, one other person that has any kind of access to any of our children. And it's another child. It's uh, not uh, um, you know, uh, uh, anybody else. There's no adults that I'm aware of or that I recall. Um, and you say, Why? Well, because we want to make sure that we know uh, who our children are talking to, what's being said to them, and all that. I can uh, pull up any one of their conversations, look at any one of the conversations. Uh, we have that ability. But uh, as parents, we do have to guard against that which be, uh, would be harmful to our children. But we adults need to have some uh, mind control as well by censoring that which is harmful to our spiritual growth. The problem with a lot of Christians is they just uh, willy-nilly let anything come through their eye gate, through the ear gate, and uh, are willing to say, oh, well, so-and-so says they're a Christian, so this must be the gospel. This must be truth, and so therefore I'm going to believe it. Somebody had their hand up. There was a, uh, uh, a video, I, uh, some of you remember I went to Arizona to a pastor's meeting, there was uh, uh, some things that we learned, there was a video, and I, I'm, I may try to show part of that, I may not show all of it, but I may try to show some of that, 
Um, and uh, this lady, she oh, she's a Christian. Uh, she owns a uh, uh, a television media group or whatever, uh, a television company, a media company. And uh, anyways, uh, uh, she was talking about the history of, um, you know, the ratings. You know, you, know, you all heard about the ratings, you know, uh, G, PG, uh, PG-13, R, NC-17, all those different things. Uh, and she was talking about how that all came about and uh, where we are today. And uh, uh, then uh, she said... Uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to go too much in depth on this because I, I don't want to chase this rabbit too far here. Uh, but uh, uh, she was talking about in the 19, uh, or early, you know, when, when uh, television first started coming out and uh, movies and things like that, uh, the 1920s and the 1930s, uh, there, was, uh, there was no uh, restrictions. You know, there was uh, uh, killings, there was uh, smoking, uh, uh, drinking, there was, uh, uh, you know, uh, showing body parts and things like that. And uh, so then uh, there was a group of uh, churches and groups of pastors that said, hey, you know, this is affecting our children, the children in our churches. And uh, uh, so there was set up a, uh, uh, some rules, and I think it was called the Hayes Law, if I remember correctly. Um, and uh, if you uh, look it up yourself and and uh, look at what it what it did, but uh, what it ultimately did is is said, hey, uh, you as the Hollywood and all that, we're going to put some censorship uh, in place. We're not going to allow you to uh, uh, you know say certain things, certain words can't be said, uh, certain things can't be shown. You know, over in Europe, uh, anything goes. You know, it doesn't matter. And uh, uh, but here in the U.S., they said, no, nope, uh, we're going we're gonna, to uh, uh, prevent some things from happening. Well, then, uh, you know, uh, about the 19, I think it was about the 1960s, I think it was, somewhere in there. Uh, even up until that time, there were some good, decent movies. Uh, uh, I've, you know, there's some older movies that I've enjoyed that were decent movies. And, and uh, you think about... Uh, uh, some of them that uh, they had good morals. It was a good. Uh, uh, there wasn't any swearing in them, you know, things like that. And uh, then all of a sudden, uh, the uh, movie uh, uh, industry said, "Hey, we've been we've been obeying the rules. We've been doing really good. Uh, we can self-regulate. We'll we'll do it ourselves." And uh, so they were like, "Okay, you know what? Uh, uh, we'll we'll allow you to do that." And and that's where the ratings came out and and things like that. And uh, uh, then all of a sudden, uh, they decided because they're self-regulating, they decided, well, we can show certain things. We can allow certain words to pass through. We can allow certain things. And as long as we tell people what the ratings are, it'll be okay. And uh, next thing you know, uh, it's affected everything, every aspect of our country. Uh, you think about all the movies that have come out, uh, the... Uh, uh, the garbage that really is being uh, put forth and and uh, pushed upon, you know, even uh, uh, even down to <coughs> excuse me, TV shows, you know, uh, long past, uh, you know, are the days of Mister Rogers. You know, uh, I would take a Mister Rogers, Amen, to, the, to uh, this day. Um, and uh, but you know, uh, there are shows. There's a, a cartoon that has a Lesbian, uh, 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 lesbian couple, and uh, uh, they, uh, uh, it seems very, uh, you know, um, innocent, and it seems very uh, subtle. Uh, it was our kids that actually caught it, and we were letting the kids watch it. It was on uh, PBS, and all of a sudden, the kids said, hey, Dad, watch this, and we watched, and we're like, Oh, my word. Yep. And so when that show comes on, we don't allow them to watch it. Uh, I think there's uh, uh, one that's the Tiger. Uh, it's kind of a spinoff from uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. We let our kids watch that. We don't even watch, let our, watch, our kids watch uh, uh, Sesame Street anymore because of all the garbage that's on that one. Yes, sir. Yes. They are, uh, if you watch, uh, you know, some of the early movies, uh, they had good morals. Most, uh, you know, most of them, I, I understand they were sometimes scantily clad. I didn't like all those, you know, uh, uh, things like that. But, 
But uh, uh, certainly there were some good morals in there. There was a good moral to the story. Uh, good uh, versus evil. You know, you knew who the evil person was. Uh, the good person wins at the end. And uh, nowadays, you know, some of them come out and you're like, what in the world did I just watch? Amen. Uh, there's even some shows now. I think there was one, uh, and I don't remember what the name of the movie was. Uh, my, my kids know what it was, and my uh, wife remembers what it, what it is. Uh, it has to do with uh, supposedly the devil having a child, and uh, that's what uh, the show or movie is about. And uh, I was like, oh, my stars. But you know, uh, uh, that's what has happened now. And now it even uh, you know, spilled over into media as far as the news media. Uh, news, uh, now uh, anything goes, they'll show anything, they'll tell anything and uh, without any restriction, claiming freedom of the press. Amen? I'm all for freedom, amen? But as a Christian, we need to be willing to say, hey, I need to have some mind control so that uh, uh, I don't allow that which is harmful into my uh, life, which will hurt my spiritual growth. And in order to, uh, to do this, we need to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Critics of biblical Christianity often uh, 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 have often accused us of, or branded us as being cultish or under some kind of mind control. You know, uh, uh, I've, uh, I've heard people say, well, Birch Street Baptist Church is a cult. No, we're trying to get people to the point where they're under the control of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you're under the control of the Holy Spirit, you're going to follow the Word of God. You're going to follow what God's Word says, amen? And if somebody says, well, that's cultish, no, that's what God's Word uh, wants us to do. God wants us to be conformed to the image of Christ, amen? You go all the way back uh, to uh, uh, the Garden of Eden. You go to uh, the book, uh, book of Romans, uh, all that. We're to try to uh, uh, conform our life, not to Pastor Hallett, not to Brother So-and-So, not to Sister So-and-So. We're to conform our life to the image of Christ so that when somebody looks at us, they can say, hey, I see Christ in that person. That's what we ought to be doing. Amen? I've got a couple hands up. Back there. Amen. Amen. But uh, again, the schoolmaster was given to us to show us that we're an imperfect people. Amen? Galatians talks about that. Uh, that we, uh, we are, are not, uh, you know, uh, uh, without the, the schoolmaster, we wouldn't know what is wrong. Amen? And uh, therefore, we have some rules. Amen? Some guidelines, some fences in our life, amen, uh, call it what you may, censorship even, uh, that would uh, say, hey, I'm going to make sure I'm going to keep some things out. That way it doesn't hurt me spiritually in my walk with God. Yes, sir. Many times they're under conviction. That's, that's what I often have found, you know, when, when somebody begins to say, oh, that's a cult. Now, I understand there are cults, all right? There are people that are, you know, controlling, you know. Uh, I had somebody one time, they said, well, pastor, do you, uh, do you tell people what color a house they should buy or what color, what kind of car they should get? I'm like, absolutely not. It's not my business, amen? That's none ya, none ya business, amen? Now, if you come and ask me, hey, pastor, what do you think of this car? I may give you my opinion, but that doesn't mean you have to abide by it, amen? Uh, I may say, hey, uh, yeah, I've, you know, I've had a good experience with this kind of car. Man, you know, every time I've bought that kind of car, I've always had bad, uh, bad experiences with it. I'm not going to buy that kind of I'm just going to recommend that you don't buy that car, amen? Uh, now, if you uh, decide you want to go buy a house, go buy a house, amen? That's between you and God. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to even tell you what kind of house or what color house. There are some pastors, amen, now listen carefully. There are some pastors that do do that, amen? There are people, like, but that is not the norm, amen? That's the exception, amen? You and I need to realize, hey, there are people like that. And, and, uh, but as a pastor, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to get up in your business and tell you, hey, you need to, you need to uh, buy this kind of car. You need to buy you know, this kind of product. And, and you're not right with God if you're buying uh, from this store. I'm not going to get into that. Amen? Somebody had their hand up. Yes.
Right. Why, why do you go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night? Isn't just one time good enough? Amen. Again, it's uh, as we grow spiritually, we understand, hey, this is why we come to church. It's not, to, you know, to, uh, uh, you know, we don't have some kind of a, you know, flashing uh, uh, lights up there, subliminal messages flashing, you know, as you're, as I'm preaching, there's no, uh, you know, uh, something flashing right in front of you. And, you know, they do that, amen, uh, television does that. Uh, why? They want to try to get you to be thinking about things and, and uh, you know, they'll do that uh, in all kinds of uh, venues. But biblical Christianity is often, uh, oftentimes uh, accused of that under the, uh, some kind of, uh, that we're under some kind of uh, mind control. Some people believe that we uh, should create truth from our own experiences rather than following the absolute word of God. That's called situational ethics, amen? Uh, and uh, that will always change, amen? Why? Look at our culture. Look at how much it's changed in the last, uh, let's go back even just 10 years, Look at how much has changed just in the last 10 years. Now, look at what has changed in the last 20 years. Then you go back even a little bit further. Look at what has changed in the last 50 years. <coughs> now, look at what has changed in the last 70 years. All these things, there's been a paradigm shift, amen, of what people think about, what they t- Talk about, uh, there used to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, I know uh, uh, it's kind of foreign to us today, but there used to be uh, classes in public school that taught the Bible. Amen? But long gone are those days that the Bible is being taught. That's why we have, you know, the uh, you know, school killings. You know, you go back, uh, uh, somebody, uh, uh, somebody showed a timeline one time of where uh, they took out the Bible and took out prayer in public schools, and then how quickly uh, the uh, uh, you know murder rate started going up. How quickly? Uh, I mean, all kinds of uh, just awful, awful, wicked uh, behavior started uh, uh, changing. And uh, you know, as I said, when I first started pastoring, I've been pastoring 18 years. When I first started pastoring, I told uh, I told some folks, I said, you know. I can see one day, it may not be in my lifetime, but I said, I can see one day where uh, they're going to try to legalize uh, gay and lesbian marriage. And then I said this, because my dad even said this years ago. My dad said this. He said, once they do that, he said, then anything will go. He said, you know, the the guy that loves his dog will be able to marry his dog. The the woman that loves her uh, cat will be able to marry her cat. And uh, I saw uh, uh, an article and of a person that married themselves. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. Amen? But the problem is, is there's no absolute truth in many people's lives. As a Christian, we have to have an absolute. Amen? There has to be a, an anchor that we, uh, uh, you know, are anchored to that will not move. Amen? You have your hand up. Yeah, amen. We'll get to that in just a moment. <laughs> amen. But uh, as we will see in this lesson, what's wrong with being controlled by truth? You know, so many times people uh, say, hey, we want to, you know, we want to be controlled by our feelings. You know, that's what happened here about four years ago. Everybody started being controlled by their feelings, not by truth. What do I feel? How do I feel about this? How does this make me feel? How, how should I respond because of how I feel? That's why uh, there were, uh, you know, uh, with, uh, um, t- uh, uh, police stations that were uh, taken over. Uh, people, you know, buildings were being burned down. Why? It was based upon people's feelings, not upon truth. There has to be an absolute in our life. If we don't have an absolute, then anything will go. Amen? Are we so foolish, though, as to trust our own experiences rather than thus saith the Lord? We have to realize, hey, God said some things for a reason. It is thus saith the Lord for a reason. Remember, we have hearts that are 
deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, as Brother, uh, Brother uh, uh, Adcock just mentioned. Turn with, excuse me, turn with me real quick, like. Book of Jeremiah, you can add to it in just a second. Jeremiah chapter 17. <coughs> excuse me. Jeremiah chapter number 17. And look with me, if you will, at verse number nine. Jeremiah chapter number 17 and verse number nine. The heart is deceitful above what? All things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You know, we're talking about every single heart, amen? If I'm left to my own devices, guess what? Tim Hallett will do all kinds of wicked things, amen? But if I'm controlled by the Holy Spirit, now the Holy Spirit will tell me, hey, nope, this is wrong. Hey, you shouldn't go here. Hey, you shouldn't be here. Hey, you shouldn't do that. Hey, you shouldn't think that. Amen? You had your hand up. (laughs) Amen. Amen. I one time, uh, there was a time in my life when I was not living for the Lord, was not going to... Uh, the right places, going to some wrong places. And I walked into this one uh, uh, place of business and uh, this individual looked at me and said, what are you doing here? You don't belong here. You talk about the Holy Spirit. Just I knew there's the Holy Spirit because I did not have a good time there the rest of the time. I only uh, stayed there maybe half an hour. I was like, I'm done. I'm out of here. Uh, this is just ridiculous. And it was the Holy Spirit, though, using that individual to say some things to me to help me realize, hey, you're not in the place you should be, amen? You need to get out of here, amen? I'm so glad the Holy Spirit used that person to speak to me. Now, that person had never met me before. They, I, I had never been in that place before, but I just walked in, and they're like, what are you doing here? You don't belong here. You need to be out of here, amen? And I just, I was like, oh. But you know, we have to realize our heart is desperately wicked. If we leave, you know, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, there's a, a verse in the Bible that talks about uh, uh, a child left unto himself uh, bringeth his mother to shame. You know, uh, you leave uh, Johnny alone, and guess what? Johnny is going to do wrong. You say, oh, he's a good kid, and oh, I've taught him well. Okay, but you leave him to his own devices, he's still going to do what's wrong. How do we know that? Think back with me, those of you that have children, all right? Remember, uh, remember when they'd scream bloody murder and you'd run in and you'd go pick them up and, and there was nothing wrong? Now, you say, well, they're a child. That's how they communicate. Yes, we understand that. But because of the sinful nature, amen, even a baby will even uh, lie to you. You say, oh, my kids are truthful. No, think back with me. When, uh, when they scream bloody murder, nothing was wrong. You picked them up. What'd they do? They stopped crying. You go to lay them out. Ah! You pick them back up. Uh, amen. Why? Because that's what's in their nature. Amen. You don't have to teach kids to lie, steal, and cheat. They're going to lie, steal, and cheat on their own. Amen. Left to themselves, that's what they do. You can try to teach them truth, amen? And that's what, why, why it's important to teach them truth and say, hey, this is truth. These are some absolutes in our lives, amen? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, amen. A couple, a couple of kids that are rebellious. Uh, you, could, you could put two kids that are rebellious, in a room full of 100 kids, and guess what? They'll find themselves, amen? They'll find each other. They always will. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Amen. You know, it was, uh, you think of going back to even Lot and Abraham. Remember when uh, Lot and Abraham, uh, Abraham said, hey, Lot, wherever you choose, you can go. Remember, they, were, they had been down in Egypt. So uh, where did Lot end up going? He went over by Sodom and Gomorrah. Why? 
because that reminded him a lot of Egypt, amen? It was hard to get Egypt out of Lot once he had been down in Egypt, amen? And you and I have to understand that. We, we uh, 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 as Christians, need to make sure that we don't allow some things in our heart and our life because it will affect us later in life. It will affect uh, our, the direction, the tra- trajectory of our life. In construction, it is important when building a, a wall to keep it plumb or, or straight by checking it with a plumb line or level. You know, uh, I remember uh, when we were working on uh, this particular building, working on the, uh, 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 the foundation, uh, some people have asked, they said, why, why is it that this part of the building, there's a ramp uh, going down to the other part of the building? Well, when we were working on it, there was a gentleman that was helping us, and, and I kept telling him, like, hey, you're going a little high. You have to get those uh, uh, joints a little bit thinner. And he goes, no, no, we got we to gotta keep it high. And I said, no, no. I said, it's going to affect this uh, other building. I said, uh, we're, we're already, by that time, I think we had gone up only like four or five rows. I think it was about five rows. And we were already almost uh, two inches, an uh, inch and a half almost. Uh, it was close to two inches above the other, uh, 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 what do they call that? Yeah, block line, what it was that? Um, anyways, I can't think of what it's called right now. But anyways, uh, uh, that line, and we were already about an inch and a half, almost two inches above that. And I said, hey, uh, I said, we got to get this down. It, it's got to it's gotta come down. No, no, I checked it. You know, I've, I've checked the level. And I said, no, because once we build that floor, I said, that floor is going to be higher than the other one. And he goes, no, no, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'm like, okay. Well, guess what? (laughs) It was not fine, amen? Because he didn't check it. And, uh, you know, he checked it with the level. uh, uh, Each row was level, amen? Each block was level, amen? But it was not level to the sense of being plumb with the rest of the building, the other part of the building. We may think that we are right in our own eyes, But the plumb line of God's word will not lead us astray. Turn with me, if you will, to 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, I want you to notice with me there verse number 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse number 8. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. You know, you and I need to realize, hey, there has to be that anchor. There has to be an absolute. There has to be truth that we are anchored to as a church, as an individual, because if we don't, we're going to, you know, when the storms of life come along, uh, we'll be tossed to and fro. We're going to be willy-nilly, do whatever we want, and uh, we'll end up being like the children of Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. There's a story was told of a captain of a ship who looked out uh, one night into the darkness and saw a light directly in his path. He instructed his signalman to send a message, alter your course 10 degrees north. Soon a reply came, alter your course 10 degrees south. The captain was unhappy because his message had been ignored. He sent a, a second message, alter your course 10 degrees north. I am a captain. The reply came, Alter your course 10 degrees south. I am third class uh, Seaman Jones. Captain, uh, Captain was outraged. He thought how arrogant the Seaman Jones was. He sent a third message knowing the fear it would uh, evoke. Alter your course 10 degrees north. I am a battleship. The response came, alter your course 10 degrees south. I am a lighthouse. So often in our life, we, uh, we think, well, I'm on the right course. And God is trying to say, hey, no, you're on the wrong course. You need to turn, amen? And you and I need to be willing to say, okay, Lord, I'm going to turn your way, amen, not my own way. I'm going to turn your way, and I'm going to follow you and what you have for me. We can re- resist and reject the truth, but it will still be true. You know, I've had people say, uh, well, I don't believe in heaven, or I don't believe in hell. And I've said this, well, it doesn't change the fact that heaven and hell are both real. 
Amen? That person can sit there and say, well, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't want to hear it. Okay, but it doesn't change the fact that heaven and hell are both very real. Eternity is very real. Amen? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Your obstinate will will uh, is never going to change God's omniscient will. Notice uh, what Jesus said in John 17. Turn there with me real quick. John chapter, chapter 17. <laughs> John chapter 17, ver- notice in verse number 17. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy what? Word is what? Truth, amen? The word of God has to be that true. Uh, I was talking with uh, somebody, uh, actually a couple of different people, and in just the last probably about three months here, I've had a number of conversations with people. And uh, with every single one of those individuals, uh, I've had a, a statement that I've made I believe with every fiber of my being, I believe God's word is true. Amen? There's not one bit of it that I don't uh, believe is true. I believe every single word with every, every part of my body, I believe every single word of God's word. I know it to be true. Amen? If I can do my best as a pastor to try to help you to uh, believe the word of God that way as well, what a difference it will make in our church, in our community, amen? Why? Because now the word of God is gonna be an absolute. You're not gonna sit there and say, well, I only believe part of it. No, you have to believe all of it, amen? Yes, sir. Amen, amen, very true. God uh, uh, never has and never will lie. Amen. God's word is always true. Notice with me, if you will, Numbers uh, 23. We're going to look at a couple of these and then we'll be done uh, for today. Numbers chapter number uh, uh, 23. Numbers chapter number 23. And uh, look with me, if you will, at verse number 19. Numbers chapter number 23 and verse number uh, 19. Notice what it says there. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath, uh, hath he said, and shall he not do it? And hath, uh, or hath he spoken, and shall he uh, not make it go, uh, good? You know, you think about this. How many times uh, over and over in the scriptures do we see that God said, hey, Thus saith the Lord, and then he did it. Amen? Yes, I know. There are times that uh, uh, you think of the time that he was going to destroy Nineveh. Amen? Now, listen carefully. He did destroy Nineveh. It just was not at the time of, Noah, uh, of Jonah. Amen? He did spare them for, for a season. But because of some uh, things that happened, you look at, uh, remember, uh, I think it's, uh, 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 who else was it? Uh, David. David's another one. Uh, that uh, God said, okay, uh, you know, you've done this, uh, and uh, uh, because of this, uh, I'm going to spare some things, but uh, I'm going to split the kingdom. Or no, that was to Solomon. I'm sorry, it was as to his son. Uh, he said, okay, because you've done this, I'm going to split the kingdom, and he did. Now, he still spared them, amen. There were still some things that uh, God, uh, you know, kept from happening, but uh, he did make good on his word. God always will make good on his word. Hebrews chapter number six, we'll close with this. Hebrews chapter number six. Hebrews chapter number six. And we'll close. Hebrews chapter number six, and notice with me there, verse number 18. That by two immutable things in which it, is, uh, it was impossible for God to lie. Listen carefully. Did you catch that, what it said? Two immutable means it's unchangeable. There are two things. One of them, God cannot lie. Amen? You say, well, I think he can. No, it doesn't matter. He cannot lie. Amen? He cannot tell a lie, he will not lie. 
too imp- it, it, it was impossible for God to lie. Uh, we might have a, a strong consolation who have uh, fled uh, for refuge to lay a hold upon the hope set before us. You know, we need to realize, hey, that one immutable thing for sure, that God cannot lie, amen? It goes back to this right here. Let me ask you this question, and you're gonna have to answer it yourself. Do you believe this? Do you believe all of it? Amen? Like uh, Brother Sella was teaching. Hey, if because here's what happens, okay? If you don't have an absolute, all right? If there's no absolute in your life, and you say, well, I believe some of it, but not all of it, but the Adcock alluded to it. What happens is it comes, you know, something comes along and you say, well, is God really truthful in that? And we can go, we have an example that's all the way back in the book of Genesis. That all, all that Satan did, all he did was get Eve to question God. Yea, hath God said did God really say that? Did God really mean that? Did God, does God's word really say that? Because if it gets you, if, if Satan, listen carefully, if he can get you to question God's word, he'll get you to begin to question God. Well, is God's word really true? Well, does God really, did God really mean eternal life when he said eternal life? Amen? Amen? Because that's what Satan will always try to do. He'll always try to get you to question God. Try to question God's word. Amen? That's the goal of Satan. Like I said, you go all the way back to the book of Genesis and chapter number three, and you find it right there and say, yea, hath God said? All he did was get her to question. And then what did she do? Well, yeah, we're not supposed to eat of it. Neither shall we touch it. God never said they weren't supposed to touch it. But she added to it. Why? Because now all of a sudden, she, it, it's in her heart, amen, because she's questioned God. Now she's thinking, oh, I got to make sure I add something else. So it sounds like I'm more intelligent. Amen? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. We're going to have to stop there uh, because of time here. And uh, uh, I wanted to get a little bit further. I thought we'd get a little further, but it is what it is. So, um, yeah, well, there was a couple of rabbits we had to stop and skin for a moment. And uh, uh, But uh, anyways, I'm glad we did. Uh, we'll, we'll stop there and uh, be sure to bring that lesson back with you. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll be next week or not. I, I may try to uh, continue it next week. Uh, next week is Mother's Day, so... Uh, I've been praying about possibly having a special uh, Sunday school lesson for Mother's Day, uh, but uh, we'll see. Let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you and praise you for all that you do for us. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to have a censored mind. Help us to realize there has to be an absolute truth in our life, Lord, and that the word of God has to be that absolute anchor, absolute truth, Lord, that does not uh, change, and Lord, that we'd be willing to say, Lord, I'm going to anchor my heart and my life to that truth. Lord, I pray that you'd help us, uh, Lord, as we uh, uh, go throughout this week, uh, Lord, and, and uh, be able to uh, uh, deal with the lies of the devil, Lord. Help us to go back to the truth of God's word. Bless now the preaching service this morning, Lord. I pray you be honored and glorified in all that's said and done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.